Horizon Forbidden West, a big fat bloated AAA game that's full to the brim of your favourite AAA tropes. You've got yellow vibrant ledges that would never exist, highlighting exactly where you need to climb because your five year old brain is too dumb to figure it out. X-ray vision and hacks telling you exactly where the enemies walk because the easy difficulty isn't easy enough. That's too easy. Magic invisibility grass that hides you like Harry Potter in the restricted section. Even if your head is clearly poking above the grass, rolling around in every direction during combat without breaking your neck on the rocky terrain. And of course, 50 bazillion icons that give you a seizure of anxiety every time you lay eyes on the massive map that you'll never fully explore. I think you get the point anyway, you know, Forbidden West, it's just full of all of this kind of stuff. But this time, it's different. This time, they actually managed to make a good game using these elements. Well done there, sir. Give yourself a pat on the back. So I like to describe Forbidden West as a good Ubisoft game. Now, I know what you're thinking, but what the Jesus hell is this guy talking about? Horizon isn't made by Ubisoft. How can it be a Ubisoft game? Hold your horses, hold your horses, all right? Just let me explain. What I mean by this is that it takes all those Ubisoft formulaic tropes and covers them with an extremely cool coating. The core and skeleton of the game is ripped straight from the classic Assassin's Creed and Far Cry games, and it's a formula that is getting a bit tedious to be honest. You know what I'm talking about. Climb this tower to reveal 500 map icons in the surrounding area. Or, you know, take out this outpost that's highlighted on the map. It's just standard stuff in gaming at the moment. So Forbidden West has all of this, but it's all the other stuff. The heart, the soul, the personality, you know, and the shiny long flowing hair. It's all of that stuff that overshadows the fact that the skeleton is just a copy and paste. If we're going with the skeleton analogy, it's all the other stuff that makes a human either an asshole or someone who you might want to date for example not their skeleton right like when you're dating you're not really thinking about the other person's skeleton unless they're like a t800 terminator or something so why not look at games the same way given that the mainstream skeleton isn't going to change anytime soon because you know that's what's working right now that's what's popular and that's what's bringing in all of that sweet moolah so the skeleton isn't going to change some of the latest assassin's creed games i would say are absolute a-holes their coating is pretty lazily slapped on i think you know they've got average stories an average world and they're just full of microtransactions trying to scam little kids those greasy little ubi snakes <laughs> but it's games like Forbidden West where I'm like, you're pretty cool actually. Maybe we should hang out again sometime. Maybe you could come to my place after, you know, and watch some Netflix. But what elements of Forbidden West overshadow its mainstream Ubisofty skeleton and make it a cut above the rest? World building and lore. This is where the game shines like a halo of light poking its head through a pile of dog shit. I mean, just look at this world. You've got robots, primal settlements, cool weapons, epic scenery. There's just epicness everywhere you look. The fact that it's set years after the fall of a futuristic science fiction utopia allows for a strange mix of genres that actually makes sense due to the world building and lore that's been put in place. It doesn't feel like a random and forced mashup of genres. It actually makes sense why there's all this futuristic technology in a primal setting. It's a hard balance to get right. I mean, do you remember that film, Cowboys and Aliens? I bet you forgot about that one. This law that's been set up allows for primitive weapons like bows and spears and tribe-like cultures that revolve around different religions to all coexist with epic sci-fi robots and AI. It's just so cool. I mean, look at this Sun King guy. He's like a cool mix of an ancient Egyptian pharaoh who's rocking metal armor plates from futuristic robots. It's just such a badass mix to play around with. This combo is unique and makes the world really interesting to explore. The graphics are also some next level shiz. But shizzle dizzle. I mean, look at all that detail. It has me salivating at the mouth just thinking about it. Down to the last minute details. Oh, and the robots. Oh, don't even get me started on the robots, man. There's just so many. There's like giant cobras and shit that sliver through the ground and underwater ones and birds and everything. You know, you can ride these bitches, swim on these bitches. You can even fly on these bitches. I mean, this shit is crazy. It was perfect. I didn't mind playing through the casual Ubisoft formula if it meant I could see more of this crazy stuff later on. The lore is expanded in this game by introducing the West and the politics of the different tribes that reside there. One of my favourite new settlements is Plainsong, a settlement where you're greeted with a blissful, holy choir that sings when you enter. 
There's also details depicting ruins from Los Angeles in the DLC, which is a nice touch. It's these details that help to enrich the lore and the world, and help to overshadow the AAA Ubisoft infestation that keeps creeping in all the time. Story. This world also allows for an interesting story to take place. Now don't worry, I'm not going to spoil anything, alright, so calm your tits. It's a typical save the world kind of story, which is nothing new obviously, but the thing that keeps it interesting is how they incorporate the world and the lore into the story. Utilising AI as a character or plot device is always interesting to me, and given the state of the wasteland that is Forbidden West, it gets me questioning that risky side of AI that stories like to explore. You know, like Skynet taking over the world and leaving it in nuclear ruin, or the machines in the matrix using humans as batteries and forcing them to live in a simulation. It's just a cool concept that will never get old for me, no matter how many times it's explored. And in my humble opinion, utilising it in a primal setting where the world has fallen into a dark age helps to keep it fresh for me. I like the idea that it's been so long that most knowledge of futuristic tech has been lost, kind of like what happened after the Roman Empire fell. Are you not entertained? This idea has been explored before, one that springs to mind is uh, the Wheel of Time, where there seemed to be a lot more knowledge and futuristic magical technology that nobody really understands anymore in this dark age that they're in. Anyway, let's get back on track. It might be Hero Saves the World kind of story, but you know, it's what they're saving it from and how it's saved that makes it unique, as it incorporates things that can only exist in this specific world. This is what makes it feel different and new, and this is what makes me want to play more. I'm happy to raid another camp or climb I'm another tower or tall neck or whatever you want to call it you know if it means I can see the next stage of the story it might not be enough for everybody but for me it helped to pull me through all the Ubisofty like parts as I was excited to see what happened next I could just turn off my brain for those bits anyway which can sometimes be a good thing after a long draining commute home from the nine to five now there's more details that I won't spoil but outside of world building the story beats are also done well, even if they are nothing new. But I can't say anything on that, because, you know, there's some big revelations here and some nice surprises along the way. Characters. Aloy. She's a kind of likeable main character, I think, but I'm not too crazy about her, to be honest. I mean, it's all right, like... She's a bit one note. The cool, loner, introverted, orphaned hero who's always good and trying to save the world. Standard protagonist stuff, you know, we've seen it all before. There's nothing that deep or complex about her. She doesn't express that much emotion, and her face is always pretty serious. She's really stoic and definitely wouldn't be that much fun at parties, you know? I'm the party pooper. Like, she really smiles and she's always just focused on the goal and thinking of a logical solution, which, you know, it can be boring to watch at times. It feels really weird in the photo mode because every expression and pose is completely out of character for her and would never happen. Like, I can never imagine her doing this snow angel, for example, or any of these selfie poses, you know, like, pouting and having her tongue out and the heart emoji just like fun playful little things i could just never imagine her character doing yeah so there's nothing too crazy going on there to be honest with the character aloy but i like her enough to want to see her story through and you know this standard protagonist setup is used for a reason it works well even if it's not new or fresh there are more interesting characters though like silence for example he's a bit more complex this guy he's a really cold and calculating guy and he's harder to read at the beginning of the story is he evil or does he have good intentions? Maybe he's a big old snake in the grass, who knows? It makes him more interesting and it was another reason why I was happy to slog through the more casual bloated parts of the game. We've already spoke about the sunken guy, you know, I think that he's pretty cool. There's other side characters as well, like this errand guy. He's a pretty funny character and he's got a bit more charisma than Aloy, even if there's not that much depth to him. He's just like Aloy's friend who can help her out and, you know, give a little bit of comic relief on the side as well. He's a likeable guy, so thumbs up for him. To summarise, what I'm trying to say is that Forbidden West is a reskin of that samey Ubisoft core that's so common in AAA games these days. But this time, the new skin is so good that it actually made me forget about the annoying Ubisoft stuff. The main thing that kept me going was the story and world elements. Knowing that in the future I would be able to fly a machine, or swim with one, or the thought of what new cool settlement and tribe I would be introduced to next. All of this helped to keep me interested, even when I was rolling my eyes at another Ubisoft AAA trope. So overall, if the Ubisoft stuff isn't that good, and the skin is amazing, I would say that it averages out to a good game overall, and I'm looking forward to what new New things the next installment can introduce to this epic world. That's my two cents anyway. Take it or leave it, mateys. 